You're watching NBC5 Today. Right now on NBC5 Today, storms in North Texas, heavy rain, lightning, and damaged homes, severely damaged. This is, like I said, the most extensive damage we've seen. It is 6 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us, North Texas. I'm Mark Fine. I'm Deborah Ferguson. It has been a busy morning. You can see the, the radar here behind us. Storms are pushing out to the east, but they're not gone yet. So let's get over to weather expert desk and find out from Grant what the latest is. Grant. Yeah, Deborah and Mark, uh, I turned the loop on here in the uh, S band radar so you can see the progression of these storms. They were moving real quickly uh, just a little while earlier this morning. They're moving about 50 miles per hour when they moved through Godley down there in Johnson. County and that speed likely attributed to some of the damage that uh, we're hearing down there. Right now, we don't have a damaging wind threat, but heavy rain ponding on the roads, thunder, lightning, gusty winds. Let's go ahead and zoom in here on the S band radar, and you can see pockets of rain, pretty widespread. So the chance is high that you're going to encounter this wet weather as you head out the door this morning. And you can see the first batch moved through, but kind of this tail end here that redeveloped down south now lifting back up and more redevelopment out to the west. Although it is lighter in nature out toward Parker County and in parts of uh, Wise County as well. But uh, this activity right here is quite heavy uh, from Irving to Love Field, North Dallas, Richardson up into Collin County. And this is going to be problematic on the Dallas North Tollway and also 75 Central. Heavy, heavy rain. Let's go ahead and take a live look from the Texas Thunder Truck and check in with Ben Russell. He's got a live report heading in that direction. Ben. Grant, we are coming to you as we make our way from Interstate 30 onto 635 northbound in Garland. And the view through our windshield shows that we're far from alone. Here's a preview of perhaps some of what Samantha might be talking about in her next traffic report. Uh, this is the mildest that the weather has been in some time. If you've been with us throughout the morning, you've seen a lot of wind, a lot of heavy rain, and a lot of lightning. None of that is exhibiting itself now. But again, we are trying to make our way up north toward Richardson, where perhaps a second cell is moving through. It has been a busy morning. Uh, driving very slowly on what would otherwise be high-speed highways. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a wild weather morning out here. Grant? Yeah, Ben, that looks just miserable. You might have better luck just getting out and walking there. Uh, let me show you where Ben's location is here on the map. So he's at 30 and uh, right here getting on uh, 635. Uh, so he's going to catch up with this heavy batch of rain. So problematic roads here, heavy rain, lightning, gusty winds is possible as well. Uh, from North Dallas to Richardson on up toward uh, the Collin Creek Mall uh, into Plano. Uh, also Wiley, Levon Lake. And again, this is all lifting northward. So it's going to be a miserable drive in if you're coming in from Collin County, from Frisco or Plano. Out west, more sporadic showers, uh, but those could get a little heavier. And we've got a, uh, multiple more uh, rounds of rain coming. That's the reason for this flood watch until Wednesday evening. So grab the umbrella. You'll need it for sure this morning. There could be a break around midday. Still about half of us, though, 50-50 chance for some downpours and some lightning strikes. We'll be in the 70s later today. And for the drive home, I do think the rain will be a lot less coverage, but there could additional be additional additional showers and thunderstorms 74 for the high let's check on traffic now Samantha you got the, a lot of uh, some red spots showing up yes we do at 602 on this Tuesday morning gonna be a rough commute for many of you we've got the wet road conditions and then we also have several accidents really starting to come into our traffic center here's one of our slowest problem spots this is I-30 eastbound at ballpark if you're trying to get into Fort Worth from Arlington only your right hand lane is getting by and this is causing delays back towards 161 you've got the very wet road conditions even though the heaviest rain has already pushed towards the east. So Tarrant County, you've got a couple of problem spots right now causing the, uh, you to be conditioned red. We've got some delays on North Loop 820 and then also uh, East Loop 820 heading uh, south near Lake Arlington. You've got an accident causing some problem spots. Dallas County conditioned red as well. And really the main problem spots that we're seeing are the, some of the slowest highways are I-30, 175, 45, and uh, 35 and 20. It's basically coming in from the south and east, getting into Dallas, where we do have the biggest problem spots working. For those of you in Collin County, condition yellow. You're doing okay on 121 in the Dallas North Tollway, but I did have a report from one of you coming on Twitter that uh, in McKinney, 
380 and 75, there is an overturned 18 wheeler there. So just take it easy. Uh, 75 Central got pounded with some heavy rain earlier. So we do have some very wet conditions. Denton County, you're one of the few spots doing okay. The rain has ended. Road conditions are not that bad. And we don't have any major issues right now working on 35E or 35W. Mark and Deborah. Lucky folks in Denton. All right, but very slow go for most people. Thank you, Samantha. 604 right now. These storms have been strong and they are moving fast across North Texas. Just minutes ago, we confirmed several homes were damaged in Johnson County. Crews right now are out on 917 between Joshua and Godly. Larry Collins is there as well. And Larry brings us this update. Larry, good morning. Good morning, Mark. You know, a very scary start to the day for many people who live in this area of Johnson County. And I'm standing right in the middle of the true testament of that. This used to be a mobile home. Neighbors tell me around 345 this morning, what they estimate to be really strong, straight line winds just came through and collapsed these walls. They say they feel like it may have rolled it. But as you see, this is the front wall right here. This is the front of that mobile home. You can see the back wall there and the side wall pushed into the home itself. The parts of these people's lives still just, uh, just thrown around here. But I can tell you the two people who lived here, two women, uh, a woman and her, uh, a, a daughter and her mother were transported with injuries by firefighters. Neighbors had to jump in to help them with this. They tell us that there is damage throughout Johnson County. This right here, is the worst of it and i can tell you in the background what i'm hearing right now i'm hearing people behind us now you can't see them because it's so dark but folks are now getting up and they're starting to assess the damage around their areas from behind me here there's a, a, a sea of mobile homes much like this one so they will be getting up there's damage next door to the carport area of, uh, of that home. We had a chance to talk with the fire chief for the Godly Fire Department, and he gave us some insight of what it was like to arrive on this scene to try to rescue the two people who were literally trapped inside. Here's what he told us. It wasn't too terrible to get to them. The, the, um, I guess the difficult part was making sure that we were able to get them out without injuring them on any of the debris as quickly as we could so we could ex uh, expedite care to them. So what the fire department is doing right now, they're checking all those other areas where they had reports of damage to make sure that there are no one else that's injured. As of right now, they don't have any more reports of injuries and luckily they don't have any reports of any fatalities. But it's going to be a long morning, partially because of how quickly that storm came through and the rain that came down has made a mess in this area. We've seen two fire vehicles get stuck at this location and that's things that people are gonna have to deal with particularly first responders who are going out trying to assess damage like this. And just to give you an idea of how quickly this came through, the neighbors who I spoke with who live right next door say they heard a strong wind, they heard things blowing around. They didn't have time to react at all before they knew what was going on. It was over, and they stepped outside to find this. Back to you. Uh, Larry, I just want to ask you, you mentioned the mother and daughter that were taken to the hospital. Is there any word on their condition? Are they okay? We don't know the extent of their injuries at this time. Uh, firefighters, of course, got those two people transported and out of the way, and then they started to look for, for more people. So, of course, throughout the morning, we'll continue to work to get any update on them uh, and their injuries. We are told that uh, one of those two women was already disabled, which made things a little bit more difficult sure. uh, in, in that case. So we'll definitely want to continue to, uh, to monitor that situation yeah, as well. Just, just a terrible scene there. All right, Larry, thank yeah, you. Definitely finding when you're in there as these women winds are coming yeah. through and your trailer home is, is is rolling. All right, we do have more weather coverage ahead as it is a weather alert day here at NBC5. If you are headed out, download that NBC DFW app. It'll keep you in the know as we deal with these storms this morning. All right, 608 right now, still ahead on NBC5 today. Breaking news out of South Korea, the latest athlete accused of doping and the big local story from the Winter Olympics, the Nigerian bobsled team hitting the track. How they're doing ahead. Plus, Rain is coming down hard across North Texas. The Texas Thunder Truck S-Band Radar and our weather experts will keep you prepared. Your next update is just minutes away at 6.08 now. Closed captioning on ABC5 is sponsored by Don Davis Auto Group. Ram Truck Month incentives on new 2018 Ram trucks means it's time to buy a truck. Buy yours from Don Davis Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. 
This is Texas under Governor Greg Abbott. Over 600,000 new jobs, record low unemployment, higher wages for workers, billions in tax cuts, among the best high school graduation rates in America, the best business climate in the country. No wonder businesses move to Texas from all over America, even the world. For Greg Abbott, this is just the beginning. To keep Texas booming, vote. Want to ride with me to the library? Nah, I've got my own ride. I have penguins! <laughs> I got trash. I have a bird's eye view! Hello there. Let's count all of the gas stations we shall pass. Oh, oh, oh! I'm gonna detail my car. Don't be a grouch. Drive a Chrysler Pacifica, a proud sponsor of Sesame Street. Right now, get $1,500 combined cash allowance on the 2017 Pacifica, and Texas residents get these additional offers. Language cold outside. Keep your family nice and warm this season with new replacement windows, new low-E doors and siding from RJ Construction. Proudly serving North Texas for over 10 years, no matter how big or small the job, RJ Construction is trusted to get the job done and always back up their quality. Charles Haley knows. Champions choose RJ. Visit rjconstruction.com to learn more about updating your home. Right, Clifford? RJ Construction. Why is Philip Huffines running a negative campaign? to hide his liberal donations. Huffines gave thousands of dollars to bankroll liberal Democrats who backed Obama and support sanctuary cities and abortion. Philip Huffines, liberal donations, negative campaign. The conservative choice, Angela Paxton, a pro-life conservative, she'll fight for secure borders and oppose sanctuary cities. For Texas Senate, constitutional conservative, Angela Paxton. This is a can't miss event. Get to Nissan now for big President's Day savings on Rogue with ProPilot Assist that helps keep you centered in your lane. The technology of tomorrow, available today. Get big savings on our entire lineup now. It's time for an upgrade. Hurry into the Nissan Now sales event for exclusive President's Day offers. Now get 1500 bonus cash on the 2017 Altima or save up to 2500 on the 2017 Sentra. The Clearance Center's Inside Nebraska Furniture Mart are closed Tuesday to prepare for our famous at, near, or below cost liquidation. With the Mart's volume, there's bound to be some one-of-a-kinds overstocks, canceled orders, closeouts, and more. Right now, there's way too much. Save big on surplus inventory. Shop our flooring, appliance, and electronics clearance areas and the big furniture clearance center upstairs. Shop early. When it's gone, it's gone. It starts Wednesday. The at, near, or below cost liquidation inside Nebraska Furniture Mart. NBC5 Weather is brought to you by Nebraska Furniture Mart. All right, welcome back, everybody. 612 is your time. What, Grant, about 3.30 or 4 when we really felt the brunt mm -hmm. yeah. of those storms moving through yeah, this and, morning? Yeah, uh, and as we saw down in Johnson County, I mean, uh, some powerful winds yeah. there for uh, for a few moments. Some peak winds, uh, most likely 50, maybe 60 uh, miles per hour down there in the near uh, Godley. Uh, the winds are not as much of a threat right now, but we do have pockets of rain. And so today's weather word, here we go, mm -hmm. going with soggy. Okay. And right. That's appropriate. It, it yeah. may even be a repeat tomorrow and the Thursday, Friday. Friday, yeah, we've got a lot more wet weather coming our way. So grab the umbrella, grab the heavy, uh, the uh, raincoat, I should say. Won't need the heavy coat, but certainly a rain repellent. Notice here on the S band radar, we've got pockets of rain. We've got some redevelopment as well out west. Weatherford, uh, you've seen a little bit of activity come back through, and also up into Jack County. More lightning with that northeast of Jacksboro. But uh, the big uh, show right now, as far as lightning and heavy rain, is north of downtown Dallas, up toward uh, Love Field. You've seen some heavy rain in the Irving area. And also out toward Grand Prairie, you see the live scan on the S-band radar. And uh, up toward Garland and Richardson is where we've seen some redevelopment and heavy rain. Also up into the Plano area, so just north of Richardson on 75. Uh, some lightning that has uh, intensified a bit here. Saxe and Wiley. Let's go ahead and reposition up toward uh, McKinney and show you Frisco area. And you can see a break right now in Frisco, but there could be another shower or two that redevelops. This is all moving north. So if you're coming down on 75 from McKinney, Allen, and Plano into Dallas. It's going to be a, a, a messy drive, a wet drive for sure. Watch for ponding on the roadways. Uh, from downtown Dallas southbound, a little bit of a break, uh, but again, we could have some redevelopment. 
As we take the wide view here, you can see more rain up toward Greenville and Commerce. Uh, additional rounds of rain today and then tomorrow. And that's, so that's the reason for this flood watch, which runs until Wednesday evening for Dallas, Fort Worth, and points to the east. Future cast here is pretty much uh, certain. It has, it's showing high confidence in redevelopment later this morning and toward midday. Uh, we're not completely sold on uh, its uh, forecast solution. Uh, I, I think about half of us will see that redevelopment toward midday, but then more likely additional showers late this afternoon and this evening. Not expecting uh, additional widespread severe weather, uh, but there could be some heavy downpours, some lightning strikes, maybe some tiny hail. But again, the biggest concern will be for high water and that flood threat. The additional rain totals through Friday here. So this will be a multi-day rain event, two to three to four, maybe even some spots close to five inches of rain farther uh, to the east. Again, here's our driving shot. This is on 635, and uh, I believe Ben Russell is nearing Richardson. And uh, you can see the wipers are going and uh, the taillight tango there on area roads this morning. Temperatures are holding steady in the 60s, even 70s. So it's going to feel like spring here in the middle of February. High 80% rain chance out the door. Make sure the the kids have the rain gear and even for the drive home some hit or miss uh, showers or thunderstorms 74 for today's high but tomorrow here comes the cold air in fact this cold front will move in uh, later tonight and that'll send temperatures down so it looks cold and wet tomorrow only in the 40s for a high with an 80 percent rain chance thursday friday saturday more rain chances sunday and monday looks like we have a little break there so plan to get outside those days all right let's see what's developing now on the road samantha yeah we've got some slow traffic granted a 6 15 on a tuesday morning several of you coming off of a three-day weekend and uh, the commute is really going to kind of hit you hard. We've got several accidents, both in Dallas and Tarrant County. That's mainly where the problems are that I'm seeing. Now, we do have a new problem spot, I-35 East southbound at Mignana. So as you're trying to head into Dallas, this is the delay right now because of that crash. You can see how wet the roads are and the traffic is really starting to stack up. So pretty much no matter where you are, you are going to have to take it easy. Now, one of the roughest spots that we're seeing right now is 75 Central coming out of Plano, heading into Richardson. This is where we have some very heavy rainfall and this is impacting traffic. You're moving at around 30 to 40 miles per hour heading south to get to the high five. Mark and Deborah. All right, messy out there. Thank you very much, Samantha. Now to the Winter Olympics and day 11 of competition. Here's the latest on the medal standings for you now. Norway is still running away with this thing so far. 28 medals overall. Germany's got 20. Canada right behind at 19. Now rounding out the top six, the Netherlands has 13. Team USA got two bronze medals yesterday, so our number is now at 12. France also with 12 medals. Now this morning we are looking at a Texas connection to a historic bobsled run. Also another athlete kicked out of the games. NBC 5's Brian Corbett. Curtis, of course, live for us all through the Olympics. He is at Olympic Park in South Korea with more now. Brian? Good morning, Mark. Yeah, this morning we have learned that a Slovenian hockey player has been ordered to leave the Olympics after testing positive for a performance enhancing drug. He is the third athlete who's been kicked out of these games. Now, the big Texas story we're following today is the Nigerian bobsled team. We are following them because they train in Houston. They have already made history at these games as the first bobsled team from Africa. Our Texans, Justin Olson and Sam McGuffey, they're off the bobsled track today. The men's team is now turning its attention to the four-man competition later this week. They are regrouping after a disappointing performance in the two-man competition. The team members who will be racing in the four-man will be announced in the next day or two, but we do expect both Sam and Justin to be there. In speed skating, Houston native Jonathan Garcia finished 23rd in the men's 500-meter long track. No men from Team USA medaled, and Garcia did not hide his disappointment. My start was pretty good, and my lap just wasn't my normal lap. If, uh, if I would have skated like I had been skating as far as the lap and then add the opener that I skated today, I think it would have been a lot better. Some big news about curling back home in North Texas. A shout-out to the DFW Curling Club. They took home a bronze medal at their national competition. 
Finally, we are celebrating Olympic gold with the flying mustache. That is the nickname given to Norway's Robert Johansson, who is lighting up social media with his magnificent mustache. Johansson helped Norway take the gold in the ski jumping team event. He's also grabbed two bronze medals at these Olympics. Mark and Deborah, a reminder about what you'll see tonight in primetime. We have Lindsey Vaughn going for gold in the downhill, and the ladies start their competition in figure skating. This is one of the biggest nights of the game so far. You don't want to miss it. I'll send it back to you. And a chance to start that comeback for Team USA. All right, Brian, thank you very much. All right, it's 618 is your time. Brian's dealing with cold temperatures. Dan Pyong Chang here in North Texas. We've got a stormy Tuesday morning. And with the storms comes new power outages. We'll update you on those numbers when we come right back. NBC5 Traffic is brought to you by Spectrum. When it comes to getting the best services for your home, it's important to have all the facts. Myth. All TV providers are the same. Fact. Spectrum TV gives you more free HD, free primetime on demand, and the Spectrum TV app. So you can watch live TV on any device in your home for $29.99 a month. Call 844-578-2999. Myth. With internet, there's always a catch. Spectrum has the fastest internet starting speeds for the price, 100 megabits, with no modem fees or data caps for $29.99 a month. Plus, Spectrum Voice gives you unlimited calling in the U.S., Mexico, Puerto Rico, and more for $29.99 a month. Call 844-578-2999. Myth. Getting the best price means signing a contract. With Spectrum, there are no contracts and no termination fees. The fact is, Spectrum gives you the best services at the best value. Get Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice for $29.99 a month each. Call 844-578-2999. Brian Curtis here with live coverage of Pyeongchang 2018. Get special access, meet the athletes, feel the emotion of their stories. It's an experience you won't get anywhere else. The Winter Olympics, here on NBC5. An epidemic threatening one in five people. Seven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred. Medical bills making it impossible to live. Nine thousand six hundred dollars. A family at the end of the road. It's never ending. We're screwed. NBC5 responds after the Olympics. Wednesday at 10. It's Ford Truck Month, and nobody does Truck Month like the Ford DFW five-star Ford dealerships. The dealerships you can trust. Get a new 2018 F-150 Supercrew STX and get $14,000 in total savings. Or lease it for just $299 total down and $299 per month for just 39 months. But only at Five Star Ford in Carrollton, North Richland Hills, Louisville, or Plano. We're taking care of business. People who get cashback refinance have goals. Patrick, what were yours? Pay off my high interest credit cards, get new flooring for my house, and improve my credit score. Fidel, did you help them do that? Absolutely. We took care of all those goals. Call TexasHoney.com for your cash back today. We got them. I agree with President Trump. Our southern borders must be secure. As Lieutenant Governor, I've added almost $2 billion to provide more troopers and equipment to keep our border strong. I took the lead in finally banning sanctuary cities in Texas to keep our families and our communities safe. Big city liberals want open borders, but I won't back down. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, a principled conservative, standing up for the people of Texas. Do you need more room? No, I'm good. You need more room, girls? I'm good. You need more room, Dad? Nope. One room if you need it. Thanks, but I'm good. Gum. Gum. No, I'm good. Gum. Ew, give me kale. The Volkswagen Tiguan, the not-so-compact, compact SUV. Hurry in this President's Day and lease a new 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan S for just $199 a month. NBC5 News at 10, tonight. It is 622 on the stormy start to this Tuesday morning. I'm Katie Blakey here in the newsroom with the stories making headlines at this hour. And we start with the weather and the power outages it's created. The latest update from Encore shows 3,600 people are without power in Collin County, 2,600 or so in Dallas County. And from there, the numbers go down. Tarrant, Grayson, and Denton counties all reporting outages right now. Encore is hopeful they'll have the power back on in these areas by 1030 at the latest. Hopefully, it'll be back on sooner.
Now to the shakeup in DeSoto ISD. Last night, the Board of Trustees put Dr. David Harris on administrative leave. He's also under investigation. Courtney Gilmore will have much more on this story for us coming up in about 15 minutes. Mitt Romney picked up an important endorsement in his bid as senator. President Trump endorsed him on Twitter last night, a significant move seen as the two have been very critical of each other in the past. And we have some business news for you. Richardson-based Golden Tree Restaurants just bought Fireside Pies. The company plans to open more Fireside Pies across North Texas. Right now there are five of them. Golden Tree also owns Golden Chick. So, you got fried chicken, and now you got a pizza shake. Back to you, Martha <laughs> Jarrett. That's some good eating. All right, thank I you, like Katie. It. 624 is your time. Well, here's a fact for you. We spend mm -hmm. roughly a third of our lives in bed. So why not make that the best of the rest? These are so-called beds in a box, helping people get a better night of sleep, and they're becoming more popular. Yeah, a lot more popular. Sales have nearly quadrupled since 2015. So, NBC5 Samantha Chapman is here to tell us whether you can actually get a good night's sleep on something that comes in a box. Uh, Samantha? That's right, Mark. It's a consumer craze I really wanted to explore. The concept seems pretty cool, but will it really give you that good rest and help you sleep like a baby? If you've ever been mattress shopping, you know just how frustrating it can be. Different brands often sell different beds at different stores. Perhaps that's the appeal of the bed in a box. Usually a compressed foam mattress rolled or folded into a package or box delivered to your doorstep. You can order online with no sales pressure and your bed comes in about a week. And if you do want to try before you buy, some popular manufacturers have teamed up with retail stores so you can go in and lie down. For example, Lisa mattresses can be found at West Elm and Casper mattresses at certain targets. Be aware they can weigh anywhere from 60 to 140 pounds. So when you open it, place the bundle right on the base first, then simply unwrap. And keep in mind, most lack handles on the side. So what are they like to sleep on? To find out, Consumer Reports has run 41 beds in a box through its rigorous tests, checking wear, support for different body types, firmness and bounciness, and pressure points. Many of these foam mattresses perform very well. Some are even at the top of our ratings, which also includes traditional mattresses. Both the Casper and the Low mattresses are Consumer Reports best buys. But if you find you and your mattress aren't a love match, most bed-in-a-box makers offer friendly return policies, some over 100 days, including finding a place to donate the mattress near you. And no, you don't have to smush it back in that box. Policies may differ if the mattress is purchased from a third-party retailer, such as Amazon. So check before you buy and don't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> now, Consumer Reports surveys have shown that the longer people try out a mattress, the more likely they are to be satisfied with the purchase. Uh, they suggest you lie on a mattress to try it out for at least 10 to 15 minutes. So, Mark and Deborah, don't be shy when you're checking it out. Uh -huh. uh, lie on your side, your back, okay. and if you're a belly sleeper, get on your belly. Now, Mark, I, I can just picture you trying it out and falling asleep and me walking into Target, and I'm seeing NBC5's Mark Fine just knocked out. I mean, with, with his own pillow in tow. Yes. I'm going to test so that out properly. Okay. That's all. Okay. All right. So when people start snapping pictures of you, we won't, we won't tease you too much. All right. Thank you, Samantha. All right. It is at now 627 on this Tuesday. Still ahead on NBC5 today. Committed to the cause. North Texas police officers on the front lines of fighting child abuse take some time for fun. The game of bingo that brought them something good. Next. Plus, a smoother commute. Yeah, we'd love that. Fort Worth, Fort Worth says they want to make the dream come true. The vote that could improve some of the city's bumpiest roads. Next. This President's Day at Kia, get cars and SUVs from the brand ranked highest in initial quality, backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Kia, a value like no other this President's Day. Get 0% financing for 75 months and no payments for 90 days on select Kias. At Canales Furniture, our large selection of beautiful furniture and appliances will help make your house a home. Financing? No problem. So why pay more when Canales Furniture can beat any competitor's price? Guaranteed. Visit one of our eight DFW locations in Arlington, Dallas, Fort Worth, Mansfield, and Mesquite. Or visit our online showroom at CanalesFurnitureUSA.com.
Canales Furniture, quality furniture at affordable prices. Greg Estes worked against Governor Greg Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick in the Texas Senate when he joined all the Democrats to oppose the ban on sanctuary cities. Estes even called it a Nazi law. You have a choice. Pat Fallon, Air Force veteran and successful business owner, a proven conservative, strong supporter of banning sanctuary cities, and a leader in property tax reform. It's time for a real conservative state senator. It's time for Pat Fallon. This President's Day at Kia, get cars and SUVs from the brand ranked highest in initial quality, backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Kia, a value like no other this President's Day. Get 0% financing for 75 months and no payments for 90 days on select Kias. You're watching NBC5 Today. Right now on NBC5 Today, storms pound North Texas. They've let up a little, but not before barreling in early this morning. We've had three to four homes that have actually been removed from the slabs. Yeah, causing some damage, and that is where we start at 6.30 on this Tuesday. Rise and shine, North Texas. I'm Deborah Ferguson. And I'm Mark Fine. The rain started moving in just after 4 o'clock this morning. And it just hasn't let up. The Texas Thunder Truck has been in the middle of it all from the beginning. In Johnson County, there is significant storm damage. You see it here. Several mobile homes blown off of their foundations. But we're going to start with Grant. And Grant, this round still hanging around and more rounds maybe yet to come. Yeah, that's right, Mark. The heaviest now has shifted to the north. It's lifting up into northern Dallas County and Collin County and then stretching eastward from there. Uh, the straight line winds that blew through Johnson County were likely in the neighborhood of 50, 60 miles per hour, maybe even stronger than that when they came through the Godley area around 3.30, 3.45 this morning. Let's zoom in here. We'll kind of take a little radar tour and show you the broad view. You can see pockets of rain as I put the animation uh, into motion here. You can see there is some redevelopment out to the west, uh, not quite as heavy as what we're seeing to the east and northeast. Uh, you can see catching a break in Fort Worth right now and also in Dallas, so that's good as expected. As I was thinking th earlier this morning, I think we, I thought we would have a break during the peak of rush hour, and that looks like that's uh, panning out. Still some pockets of moderate to heavy rain, though, from Richardson and Addison on up into the Plano area, and then farther up into Collin County, and uh, we have deployed uh, the, uh, the uh, NBC5 Storm Ranger this morning, our mobile Doppler radar technology, and we have it based in Roy City to give us a real good look at this thunderstorm here over Farmersville, Princeton, Levon Lake, and Wiley. Heavy rain, not a severe weather threat, but certainly a nuisance on the road. So let's head out into the Plano area. Ben Russell in the Texas Thunder Truck for a live report as well. Ben. And Grant, we're 75 northbound in Plano, approaching Allen, and it seems as though we've just now left in the last couple of minutes the bulk of the rain. Looking at the onboard radar, perhaps moved off to the north and the east. The view through our windshield shows uh, you can see quite a lot of headlights heading south on 75. It is that time of day as people make their way down towards uh, points farther south, uh, primarily Dallas, no doubt. Uh, the wind has stuck with us a good bit. The rain has dissipated, but all morning long, a lot of rain has fallen, so people headed out do need to be aware of that we've seen, we've experienced multiple points where there's been serious ponding on the roads so that's something that drivers will want to account for all right Ben, appreciate that serious ponding on the roads that is the takeaway and the wipers are going so yeah still dealing with some wet weather and where it is raining it's coming down pretty hard but uh, we are seeing some breaks here and there more rain is likely though and that's why there's a flood watch through wednesday evening from dallas fort worth to the east we're talking about two to four inches maybe some spots seeing five inches of rain later this week before all is said and done certainly starting on a wet note here this tuesday morning grab the umbrella high 80 percent rain chance about a 50 
50-50 chance at noon, so you may be able to get out for your lunch break and not get wet, but make sure you have the umbrella, and the kids will certainly need it as well. They could be encountering a few showers and thunderstorms for the drive home later today. 74 for the high temperature. Samantha, you've been busy this morning as well. That's right. You saw the road conditions from the Texas Thunder Truck, and that's what it's like in parts of the area. Other parts of the area where the rain has already pushed through, it left some wet road conditions, and as you can see, we do have quite a few accidents this morning across Dallas-Fort Worth. Here's one of our newest problem spots, I-20, the eastbound lanes at Camp Wisdom. You've got an accident that involves a couple of vehicles here. Road conditions probably very slick, and we do have emergency crews on the scene. So that's one of our pressure points right now working in Dallas County. These are the areas where you're going to run into some problems. I-20, you've got two accidents between 67 and I-35E, and then also 635 LBJ, you've got a crash, and then also some very slow traffic because of some of the heavier rain that pushed through. Your pressure points where you're going to have some of the problem spots in Tarrant County, 820 eastbound, and then also 820 southbound near Lake Arlington. Uh, you've got some crashes there. And then again, very heavy rain on 75 Central, so you're slow coming out of Plano, heading to Richardson. And then we also have reports from one of you guys that I received on my Twitter account of an 18 wheeler that has been overturned uh, in McKinney on 380 at 75. Denton County, you're kind of the bright spot here. No major issues and road conditions are doing okay. Mark and Deborah. All right, you finish on a high there, but probably a good good idea for everybody to leave a little early today. 634 now. The storms have been strong. They are moving fast across North Texas. And just a few minutes ago, we did confirm several homes were damaged in Johnson County. Crews are right now on 917 between Joshua and Godly. Larry Collins is there as well. Larry, what's the latest? Good morning, Mark. Well, this, of course, is the worst of the damage, this mobile home here in between those two cities. And we're standing in the middle of it. I wanted to give you a different vantage point of it to kind of give you an idea of the power of the wind that came through. And I say that because it showed us a little bit of something. Take a walk with me over here. As we walk over here, what we once thought earlier this morning was the back wall of the trailer collapsed is, in fact actually the floor of the trailer. So what it looks like happened is that this is the trailer hitch, of course. It looks like that strong wind came and flipped that trailer over. And two people were inside. We, we are told they were transported with injuries. Not sure of the extent of those injuries. But as you can see, this apparently was the bedroom here, a bathroom here. Just the extent of this. Neighbors say it happened so quickly around 345 this morning. No one had time to react as soon as those next door neighbors heard it had stopped. The winds were over. The rain had subsided. That's when they came out and found this monumental mess, and they knew that their two neighbors, two women, were inside. They aided firefighters in rescuing them from this rubble to get them out and to get treatment. Those firefighters right now are going and surveying other damage, not as extensive as this, but damage nonetheless just to make sure that there are no other injured people. This area is just starting to wake up right now. We've seen the school bus is going to pick kids up, people behind us starting to assess damage there. It is going to be a very long morning for this area of Johnson County as cleanup begins. And for a family like this, just trying to make sure that everything is accounted for, but more importantly, that their loved ones are okay. Back to you. Yeah, yeah but when that uh, mother and daughter come out of the hospital, they'll have nothing to return to. All right, Dale, thank you, Larry. All right, as, as folks are getting up and wandering outside and looking at the effects of the storms this morning, they're sending in pictures of the damage. Katie Blakey is in the newsroom right now monitoring that for us. Katie? Yes, Deborah, we've been monitoring social media for signs of damage and relying on our viewers to let us know what they're seeing. Here are a few photos we received overnight. And one of these, you can see a tree toppled there. Amy Clayton says the wind caused this tree to crash on parts of their home. And of course, the car you see there in the image. We also see parts of a damaged fence. A viewer says this all happened in Haltom City, and she told us everyone is okay. But as you can imagine, a big day of cleanup there. If you have any photos from storm damage you'd like to share, you can send those to IC at NBCDFW.com. Include your name and some information about what we're seeing in the photo and where it happened. But again, only do this if it is safe to do so.
I'll send it back to you. Yeah, good point there, Katie. All right, we'll have more weather coverage for you in just a little bit, but right now at 637, we want to get you caught up on some of the other stories we're watching this Tuesday morning. And the other big story comes from Dallas County and the shock today in the DeSoto ISD. Late last night, DeSoto board members put their superintendent on administrative leave. Dr. David Harris has been superintendent since March of 2016. He was relieved of his duties as superintendent last night, and we were there as that decision came down. NBC 5's Courtney Gilmore is live in DeSoto this morning to tell us what happened. Courtney, good morning. Oh, good morning to you, Deborah. Teachers, parents, and students waking up this morning very confused about the sudden decision. Not only was the superintendent relieved of his duties, but the board also voted to uh, initiate an investigation concerning his performance. Now, take a look at this video because, as you said, our cameras were there last night during this decision. DeSoto ISD board members voted unanimously to relieve the superintendent of his duties effective immediately. Dr. Harris, DeSoto is now former superintendent was at that board meeting and sat there as the motion passed seven to zero. Dr. Harris got up and left his position and uh, he later turned to our camera and said that he was shocked. Now after that meeting we had a chance to speak to a parent, Tracy Sanders, who was there during that uh, entire decision, when that decision was made. She has a son and a daughter that attend school within the district. She says that after the decision she was frustrated. She was also very confused. Take a listen. Unanimous decision, and, and nobody wants to say anything. I mean, I'm blown away. I'm hurt. I, I don't trust the process with the Soto School Board right now. I guess because I don't know what's going on, and I should know. I'm a taxpayer. Well, parents say that it's still unclear why this decision was made. They also say they're frustrated because they believe right now there's a lack of transparency. Back to you. Yeah, we'll be asking more questions about that later today. Courtney, thank you. 639 now. We're also following big news out of Austin. Seven police officers are under investigation this morning after they shot and killed a man last night. The investigators say it all started as a fight between roommates. Police say at one point a man involved in that fight got into a cab now police stopped the taxi ordered the driver and the man to get out the driver did the suspect though jumped into the front seat and took off police chased him to an apartment complex that's when the whole thing turned into a standoff investigators say the suspect then pointed a gun at police and SWAT officers seven officers then fired at the man police the district attorney and the city manager all appeared at a news conference last night Authorities say footage from at least one body camera has already been reviewed. Right now, all seven officers are on administrative leave. That is routine while police investigate exactly what happened. All right, today marks the start of Decision 2018. Early voting, the March primaries, officially begins. If you are headed out to the polls, don't forget you need an approved form of ID. And all morning long, we have been talking about some of the most anticipated races in North Texas. Of course, the big one. For governor, Republican Greg Abbott wants to keep the job. There are nine Democrats, though, who want the governor's seat. Among them is former Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez. She runs her campaign out of her home in Dallas. The Dallas Morning News reports she officially hired a veteran campaign manager yesterday. Yeah, one of the most watched races of the primary season is in Collin County, the fight for state Senate seat in District 8. Right now, Angela Paxton and Richardson businessman Philip Huffines both running as Republicans. Both candidates agree on a lot of issues, border security, property, tax relief, and school finance reform. Both have access to big money and the benefit of well-known names. Angela is the wife of Attorney General Ken Paxton. Huffines is the twin brother of Don Huffines, who already serves in the Senate. And now let's talk about the race for the 6th Congressional District. Congressman Joe Barton is retiring after 18 terms in Congress. He chose not to seek re-election after a lewd image and text messages he sent to an ex-lover circulated on the Internet. So 11 Republicans and five Democrats are running for his seat. District 6 covers parts of Southern Arlington, rural Ellis County, and also Navarro County. And there's big news in Rockwall County. Voting now 100 percent digital. Voters will now swipe in with their driver's license, then use an electronic machine to fill out their ballots. 642 now, and in Plano, trustees will meet to talk about hiring a new superintendent. Dr. Brian Bigelli resigned last month. The board is only considering internal applicants right now. They're expected to decide if any of those applicants will move forward today. 
Those chosen will then interview this week. An internal candidate could be named as a loan finalist by early March. And today, City Council members in Farmers Branch will talk about taking a former member to court. Jeff Fuller was recently sentenced to three years probation for stealing money from the city. He was previously the head of Parks and Rec Department there. Uh, they're going to meet again to talk about the case tonight. All right, still ahead on NBC5 today, we're keeping our eye on the storm that slammed North Texas overnight and new storms popping up as well. Yes, and there's causing traffic problems as well. We get you caught up on all of it when NBC5 Today returns. Your time now, 642. Experience the new show. Heart-pounding excitement and the dawn of a new era. All hail the queen. Tickets starting at $30.95. Visit MedievalTimes.com. Let's get ready to save. It's Truck Month at Bob Thomas Ford in McKinney. And in this corner, the top contender, our own Bob Thomas, the truck driving, deal given, industry leading F 150 champion, Mr. McKinney. I've got your knockout deals right here. Get 16000 off the 2017 F 150 Super Crew or 10000 off the 2017 F 250 King Ranch. We have a winner, folks, and it's Mr. McKinney! I'm loving this coffee, because with every sip, I'm saving tons by downloading digital coupons at Kroger.com. I can even get a digital coupon for a free product every Friday. And every day, I can choose from over $400 in digital coupons. So, I'm in. Sign up for your free account and start saving more today at Kroger.com. Get ready for the Daytona 500 at the Kroger Racing Five Times Digital Coupon Event. Download your coupons today. The morning after Donald Trump was elected, my daughter Penelope asked, Daddy, is Donald Trump really going to do all those mean things he said he was going to do? I thought bullies never win. I told her no matter what, whether it's here or in Washington, you have to keep standing up for what's right. I'm Ed Meyer, and I approve this message because we need to hold Donald Trump accountable. In Congress, I'll fight his dangerous agenda that hurts our families. Join me on March 6th to show our kids that if we stand together, the bullies can't win. Baby, it's cold outside. Keep your family nice and warm this season with new replacement windows, new low-E doors and siding from RJ Construction. Proudly serving North Texas for over 10 years, no matter how big or small the job, RJ Construction is trusted to get the job done and always back up their quality. Charles Haley knows. Champions choose RJ. Visit rjconstruction.com to learn more about updating your home. Right, Clifford? RJ Construction. Oof. Experience the new show. Heart-pounding excitement and the dawn of a new era. All hail the Queen. Tickets starting at $30.95. Visit MedievalTimes.com. The Clearance Centers inside Nebraska Furniture Mart are closed Tuesday to prepare for our famous at, near, or below cost liquidation. With the Mart's volume, there's bound to be some one-of-a-kinds overstocks, canceled orders, closeouts, and more. Right now, there's way too much. Save big on surplus inventory. Shop our flooring, appliance, and electronics clearance areas and the big furniture clearance center upstairs. Shop early. When it's gone, it's gone. It starts Wednesday. The at, near, or below cost liquidation inside Nebraska Furniture Mart. NBC5 Weather is brought to you by Nebraska Furniture Mart. Grant comes right. running on over right here. Right I know. Busy, busy morning. Computers <laughs> yeah, over there, right. yeah. there's, there's more coming. Yeah, right? There is more yeah. redevelopment. And that's really p presented a challenge with, with the forecast because this batch moved through so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like we're going to see a, uh, some additional development. And, in fact, we have the Storm Ranger deployed uh, this morning. You remember the Storm Ranger? Yes. Yeah, of course. Sure. Uh -huh. yeah, this is the first time it's been deployed the, this year. It's our mobile Doppler radar. You hear us all the time talking about the S-band radar. Right. The Storm Ranger is an X-band radar. That's so. Right. A very high resolution radar on that red dot right there. You see the uh, the, the, the uh, radial spinning spinning around there. That's the Storm Ranger this morning. It's out in Roy City and it's giving us a real good look at this thunderstorm that uh, is spread out across Collin County. Still some pockets of heavy rain from Plano to Allen up toward Princeton and Farmersville, and it looks like it's going to just clip uh, those of you in McKinney. Not seeing a whole heck of a lot of lightning with this. Still possible, but mainly just a heavy downpour. Getting a real nice look at it just to the north of uh, Farmersville. You can see the uh, nice detail from the Storm Ranger. So that's our mobile Doppler radar technology. And of course, we've got the S-band. That's the yellow sweep that you see. 
and it's showing yeah, you know, still a few lightning strikes here uh, to the east of McKinney that stretches up toward Wolf City. Also Paris still dealing with some rain, but notice Dallas is not getting rain. So a nice break and most of Tarrant County is uh, getting a break from the rain as well. But roads are still wet, so keep that in mind. That's going to present some issues. And then you can see as I loop this, that activity moving north. But here's the redevelopment out west. And this has a lot of lightning with it. Uh, certainly these storms look like they're blossoming. And these, as they continue to develop uh, out toward Abilene, will slide in our direction. So we're not done. Far from it. We've got a lot more rain on the way. In fact, the next several days look wet. Uh, flood watch runs at least through Wednesday evening from Dallas-Fort Worth to the east. Here's future cast again. We're focusing on that redevelopment out west. That'll affect us late this morning, perhaps toward midday. So as you head out for lunch, it could be wet. And as the kids come home from school, could be dodging some raindrops with even another batch that shows up late afternoon and evening. And we're talking about some garden variety thunderstorms primarily, but they could produce some heavy downpours. And certainly that's what we've seen this morning aboard the Texas Thunder Truck right now. It's a wet drive. Uh, that's Ben Russell's view uh, in uh, North Dallas. Uh, I believe he's just south of Plano right now, actually. 66 degrees as you head out. And uh, yeah, perfect uh, day here for the bus stop artwork showing the stormy scene there. That's from Emma Hughes, a first grader in Salina. So appreciate that. Drop off temperature this morning holding in the 60s. Make sure they have an umbrella for sure at the bus stop. 74 later today. We may have a few more thunderstorms redeveloping. And again, those rain totals run it through Friday here. Look at this two to three and in some spots four or five inches of rainfall. We do need it. Uh, the timing though not so great here this morning. I lowered the rain chance quite a bit as you head out this morning. Uh, it looks like uh, many locations starting to see a nice break but toward midday 60% chance of those thunderstorms redeveloping and for the drive home as well. Uh, overall though it's a yeah it's a 100% chance uh, at some point today if you haven't seen it yet I believe everybody has. Tomorrow turning much colder 80% rain chance only in the 40s for the high tomorrow. Tomorrow, and those rain chances stick through Saturday. Samantha, there's an opportunity, I think, Sunday and Monday to get outside and not get wet. Yeah, the bottom half of this screen looks pretty good, for <laughs> right. It's the first half where you have all the rain. And uh, you talked about 100% chance of rain. We've got 100% wet roads across Dallas, Fort Worth. Also, several problem spots. We do have the Texas Sky Ranger who's able to fly now. We do have some clearing in the Garland area. Uh, so we're taking a look at a crash involving two 18 wheelers. This is 635 southbound near Garland Road and take a look at the slow traffic. Now we're zooming out slowly to kind of show you what is going on and we're also going to put Ranger Vision on right now and this is new technology that we have that's basically going to overlay a map on the video footage coming into us from the Texas Sky Ranger to give you exactly uh, some perspective on where we are. So again where you're seeing the slow traffic right now that is 635 right at South McCree Road where you really have traffic right now at a standstill. Again, this is the southbound direction here. Now, if we head back over to our traffic computer right now, uh, I also want to show you the view coming out of Plano, getting into Richardson, trying to head into Dallas, because this is an area where we do have some very heavy rain moving through at the moment, and you can see these cars just kind of inching by on those wet road conditions. So really, uh, no matter where you have to go this morning, give yourself about an extra 20 to 30 minutes to get there, because we do have some very wet road conditions. We also have quite a few accidents. By 9 o'clock this morning, this is your traffic forecast, uh, things should start to improve across the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We're still going to see some slow traffic in a few spots, mainly uh, people leaving the house later and the rain picking back up. Uh, but as we take a look later this afternoon, by 4 o'clock, there's the potential for more weather. And that is also when we're going to start to see the rush hour pick up in Dallas. And by 5 o'clock, it is on Mark and Deborah. Uh, several slow spots expected. All right. But this morning, Ranger Vision, Storm Ranger, Texas Thunder Truck. We're bringing it all out to help you get through this stormy Tuesday morning. We'll get back to weather coverage in just a little bit, but right now at 651, I want to get you caught up on some other news. This one comes out of Fort Worth. The brick streets in many areas of Fort Worth are charming, but if you drive them, you know they get bumpy when those bricks need repair. A vote at City Hall tonight could finally bring a big fix in five areas. Council members will likely vote to approve almost $390,000 to remove and replace bricks that have started to, the fail, started to fail to the point of completion.
complete disrepair. The five brick streets set for upgrades are Camp Bowie Boulevard, East 2nd Street, East 8th Street, Main Street near Sundance Square, and North Calhoun Street near Tarrant County College, Trinity River East Campus. Approval at City Hall tonight means the work will start next month and it should be wrapped up by September. You make a lot of people happy. Sure will. No doubt. 652. Hey, 600 women playing bingo. Sounds like a lot of fun, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, sure does. It was definitely something good for the kids who benefited from it. It was fun and games mixed with a little competition at the 8th Annual Let's Play Bingo. 600 women all came together ready to shout bingo in support of Alliance for Children. The nonprofit agency works to fight child abuse in Tarrant County. The special guests of honor were 12 police officers from several Tarrant County departments who all work to protect children and investigate cases of abuse. Their job on Saturday was to have a little fun, dress up, put on some costume, mm -hmm. and hand out bingo prizes making them the crowd favorite. All right, see something good out there? Tell us about it at I see at NBCDFW.com. All right, still ahead on NBC5 today. Overnight storm damage, pop-up storms, and another round that if you haven't left yet could really affect your commute. Yeah, 653 is your time and we'll be right back. Coverage of the 2018 Olympic Winter Games on NBC5 is brought to you locally in part by GMC. We are professional grade. How do you want to live? As a decent person? Good husband. Is that it? Good? Of course not. King of the Hill? Better. Top of your game? Win. All powerful. Like a boss. Like a pro. We couldn't agree more. We are professional grade. Step up to GMC with 9,000 total value and a specially equipped 2018 Sierra SLT Crew Cab model. Plus get an additional 1,000 when you finance through GM Financial. Got a light that doesn't light? Switch that doesn't switch? Call Milestone today for our $43 off special. Experience our award-winning customer service. It's the gold standard. Call Milestone for service. We'll fix it in a flash. Skyrocketing property taxes are threatening homeowners and are hurting businesses. We must reduce property taxes now. I will ensure you have a right to vote on local property taxes, and we must freeze property taxes for everyone 65 and older. Liberals oppose reducing property taxes, but I won't back down. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, a principled conservative, standing up for the people of Texas. Wife. Yoga enthusiast, Realtor, not ready to let her back pain slow her down. There is one name to trust in spine care, Medical City. Your life with a healthy back and neck is waiting. Got a light that doesn't light? Switch that doesn't switch? Call Milestone today for our $43 off special. Experience our award-winning customer service. It's the gold standard. Call Milestone for service. We'll fix it in a flash. We don't run from our fears. We run with them. That's what makes us legendary. That's what makes us free. Welcome to the Brotherhood of Muscle. Get $2,250 total cash allowance on the 2018 Charger SXT. And Texas residents get these additional offers. Know and Go on NBC5 is brought to you by Dodge. 6.55, and as you get going this morning, you need to know about a messy day. Yeah, uh, Mark, we're talking about scattered thunderstorms. You see them here on the S-Band radar. Not looking at severe weather right now, meaning no large hail or damaging winds, and certainly no tornado threat here with this activity. But heavy downpours, you see the lightning strikes, and this is the redevelopment out to the west. Let's zoom in here. First off, the first batch has lifted through, and uh, as expected, remember at about 4.30 this morning, I said, I think the, the worst of it is going to clear for the peak of the morning drive, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in Dallas and in Fort Worth. But still some pretty good rain up toward McKinney, even Frisco, that little batch crossing over the Sam Rayburn Tollway. But uh, most of us are seeing a break from the rain right now, but the roads are still wet. And then we shift out to the west. This is all redevelopment. Jacksboro, some heavy thunderstorms coming up from the southwest, also out toward Ranger and Rising Star. And this is what's likely to affect Dallas-Fort Worth toward late morning and into the midday hour. So right now, through the 7, 8 o'clock time frame, about a 30 to 40 percent rain.
percent chance. Uh, but by six, uh, by noon, 60 percent chance. So it goes back up, and we'll just kind of maintain a low to moderate rain chance later in the day. 74 will be the high. More rounds of rain coming uh, tomorrow as well. All right, let's check back with Samantha on traffic. And Grand is 6:56 with all the rain that we had. No surprise, your commute is not very fun this morning. We have several areas with some slow traffic and also several accidents across Dallas Fort Worth. I want to uh, point out your key pressure points. These are the areas where I'm seeing some of the slowest traffic. And if you're in Arlington, you're going to notice very heavy traffic on 30 and 360. I-20 in Dallas, there's a string of accidents and then also 635 LBJ moving slowly because of rush hour and also a crash. I want to take you to our view from the Texas Sky Ranger because 635 southbound at Garland Road. Look at this accident. This is two 18 wheelers off to the side here. The roads are damp and traffic is moving slowly. So the Texas Sky Ranger right now is zooming out to show you some of the slowest traffic and it's happening right now in both directions. And as we take Ranger vision and overlay it on this image right here, this is new mapping technology that we have from the Texas Sky Ranger. You're going to see that uh, right around South McCree Road at 635 and then also 635 at Jupiter. You've got traffic that is virtually stopped right now in both directions. So some very heavy traffic there. Heading back over to our traffic computer right now. One of the other pressure points that I pointed out, I-30. Here's 30 at Ballpark Way through Arlington. And whether you're heading in or out of Arlington to get to Fort Worth or Dallas, uh, traffic is slow uh, in pretty much both directions. Also, if you're traveling on 75 from Plano into Richardson, you've got some pockets of slow traffic here, mainly because that's where Mark and Deborah, some of the heaviest rain just pushed through. All right. And as if that's not enough, there is more news that you need to know before you go this morning. Katie's here with that. Yeah, the weather causing a lot of issues. We want to start to some damage in Johnson County. Look at this. Several homes damaged along FM 970 team between Joshua and Godley. Strong winds destroyed a mobile home. That's what you're looking at here. A mother and daughter pulled from this debris and were taken to the hospital. Encore, though, is making some progress, restoring power to people. 2,700 people remain without power in Collin County, 1,500 in Dallas County, and from there you see a few hundred out in Tarrant, Grayson, and Denton counties. Encore is hopeful they'll have the power back on by 1030, if not sooner. Rockwall police are having problems with their phone lines this morning. If you live in the area, you'll need to call that backup number. It's all because of the weather. That number there on your screen, 972-722-5719. And turning now to some shock in DeSoto ISD, the superintendent is off the job and under investigation. The board announced their decision to put Dr. David Harris on leave last night. They did not offer an explanation as to why. And the U.S. Postal Service offering a hefty reward, $50,000 to solve the murder of an employee. 58-year-old Tony Mosby was shot while driving his mail truck through downtown Dallas yesterday. So far, Mark and Deborah, no arrests have been made. All right, needless to say, a very busy news day here at NBC5. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you caught up with the weather and traffic situation all through the Today Show. All right, have a great day. Be careful out there on the roadways.